this video, I'm gonna talk about my five favorite lenses to use with my Sony A6000. Now, all these lenses work with any APS-C, crop sensor, Sony E-mount camera, including the A6000, A6100, A6400, any A6000 series, as well as any X series camera. And so this list doesn't need to be limited to just the A6000. I actually use most of these with my A6400 as well, as well as my FS7. So this list is perfect if you have a crop sensor, mirrorless Sony camera, and you're looking for a new lens at pretty much any price level, one of these five lenses should cover that perfect. Now also, I'm not gonna be going in any particular order with these, so definitely watch this entire video. All five of these lenses are awesome in their own ways, and they're all in different price ranges, used for different things. So if you're looking for a new lens, I'm sure the perfect one is probably in this list. So like I said, watch this entire video. So I'm gonna bring these lenses up one by one, talk about what it's best used for, what it is, show some photo examples that I took with it, and then move on to the next one. So without further ado, let's just get right into this video. All right, here goes. So lens number one, this has gotta be one of my favorites for what I do at least. This is the Sigma 18 to 35. Now I have this on my A6000 right now, so you can kind of see the size comparison. This lens is pretty huge compared to the A6000. And it's also much heavier than the A6000. It's like probably three times the weight, honestly. However, this lens is definitely worth the size and weight because of just how sharp and how good it is. Now, one thing to note real quick, two of the lenses on this list are going to require a Sony E-mount to Canon EF lens adapter. I use the Sigma MC11. This is my favorite adapter. I'll link it down in the description if you want to check it out but you can pretty much use any Sony E-mount to Canon EF lens adapter. Just make sure that wherever you buy it from, it says it supports autofocus and has these electronic contacts in it. So the Sigma 18 to 35, this is of course an 18 to 35 millimeter lens. So pretty much covers that range of semi wide angle all the way to, you know, somewhat telephoto around the 50 millimeter equivalent field of view. So because of that, this is pretty much the perfect like do it all lens, you know, for walking around doing like street photography, you know, even some portraits if you zoom all the way into 35 millimeter it has really good background separation, especially being that this is a constant f1.8 aperture. So whether you are 18 or 35 or anywhere in between, it's gonna always be able to stay at f1.8. But that's also the reason why it's so heavy and big, because it has to fit so much glass inside of it to keep the f1.8 aperture. Like I said, this is one of my favorite lenses to use, because you can pretty much use this for everything, and it's tack sharp, and there's really not anything else bad to say about this. It supports autofocus. It doesn't have stabilization built into it. However, that's not a super big deal because it is more of a wider angle lens, so it's not as important to have stabilization. So if you record videos, it'll be a little bit shaky unless you're on a tripod or a gimbal. And then for photos, you'll have to up your shutter speed just a little bit so you don't get any shaky photos. But either way, that's lens number one. Like I said, this is kind of how it looks like on the camera. It's definitely pretty front heavy with the A6000. You know, if you're taking this on long hikes, it might kind of be a little hefty for you. But if you can handle the size and weight of this, it is a fantastic lens. It's basically like a bunch of different prime lenses built in one because of how fast the aperture is. Then the last thing to bring up about this lens is of course the price. Now I'm gonna link all these lenses down below in the description if you wanna check the updated prices because prices kind of switch around. However, this lens new is right around $700. So it's a pretty hefty price tag on this as well. You can get it used for cheaper, but if you want this new, it's about $700. So you know what they say, marry your lens, date your camera. Cameras are coming out every single year. You can always get a new camera body, but lenses pretty much last forever if you take care of them well. However, like I said, that is a hefty price tag. I'm gonna have a lot more cheaper lenses I'm gonna talk about in a minute, so definitely stay tuned if this is out of your price range. But next up, let's move on to lens number two. So next up, we have this right here. So this is even bigger than the Sigma lens. However, it's not quite as heavy, I don't believe. Let me just get this swapped on my A6000 real quick so you can kind of see a size comparison. Now this lens right here is gonna be pretty much the best like overall lens. Like if you wanna buy one lens to do everything, this is probably the lens for you. However, that being said, you can see how big this lens is. Like I said, it's not quite as heavy as the Sigma. However, it's much bigger, especially when you zoom all the way in. This is a giant lens. So this right here is the Canon 24 to 105 millimeter F4 L lens with image stabilization. Now the lens I have right here is the Mark II version. So this is more expensive than the Mark I. However, they're both really similar. I'm gonna link the Mark II version down below in the description though, because it's the most common one to find new. However, if you wanna buy this used and save some money, I'd probably recommend going with the Mark I version. It's gonna be a lot cheaper. And there's really not a whole lot of differences besides the build quality is maybe a little bit better on the Mark II. Sharpness may be a tad better on the Mark II, but really it's not gonna be 
a noticeable difference. But either way, let's get into the specs of this lens. So like I said, this is the Canon 24 to 105 millimeter lens. So on the A6000, 24 to 105 covers anywhere from like that mid range 35 millimeter equivalent ish field of view all the way up to a telephoto lens, like about 150 or 160 millimeter equivalent on the A6000. So like I said, this is pretty much the dual all lens. It doesn't cover anything super wide, like the 18 to 35, but if you do more like portrait work or longer range work, this lens is awesome for that. Cause like I said, it goes all the way to 105 millimeters. And the best part about it is it does have stabilization built into it. So this will make your footage or photos so much smoother, especially when you're zoomed all the way into like 105 millimeters or, you know, 85 or really anything kind of past that 50 millimeter point, the stabilization is gonna help a ton. Now, the one downside of this lens is that it's F4. So it is constant F4 from 24 to 105 millimeters. However, F4 is definitely a lot slower than most prime lenses. It's gonna have less background separation. It's gonna be worse in low light. However, the fact that it's still a constant F4 all the way throughout the zoom range is pretty solid. So it's not like a lot of kit zoom lenses that'll go, you know, all the way down to like F7.1 once you zoom in all the way. So it does still stay at F4, but just keep that in mind that it's not gonna be as good in low light and not have as good background separation as the 18 to 35 at similar focal lengths. However, once you're into 105 millimeters, there's still gonna be an insane amount of background separation. And you know, it's really up to you whether the longer zoom range with stabilization is more important to you or a wider zoom range with f1.8 aperture is better for you which is what the sigma will provide but also the canon lens is more expensive i think new is close to a thousand ish dollars so this is a huge investment but like i said the build quality is amazing it's weather sealed you're also going to need this sigma mc11 adapter or just any canon ef to sony email adapter but for the price point this lens is absolutely amazing. Like I said, it does it all. It covers almost every focal length you need. Has stabilization, super good build quality. It's not super heavy, but it's a lot longer than pretty much any of the other lenses I'm gonna talk about. So it's pretty front heavy on the A6000. But again, you know, you pay for the build quality, you pay for the sharpness you know, the features of it. Stabilization adds some size and weight to it. So you're really gonna have to pick your poison. But like I said, there's definitely smaller, cheaper lenses coming up in just a minute here. So stay tuned for those if this is also out of your price range. All right, so next up, let's move on to lens number three. So you already see this lens is a lot smaller than this Canon lens, but you also don't need the Canon EF to Sony EMO adapter for this lens either. So let's get a swap down there. I'll show you a little bit of a size comparison and you know, an in-hand look on the A6000. And so there it is. This is so much smaller, so much lighter. It's a lot more well balanced on this camera, you know, especially not having that adapter to really extend it out more. Um, it just feels a lot better in hand. Now, like I said, this is the Sigma 16 millimeter F 1.4. So this is going to be a really wide angle lens. It's about a 24 millimeter full frame equivalent on the Sony a6000 and F 1.4 is the fastest lens yet. This provides so much background separation. It's amazing in low light conditions. And this right here is probably what I would say is the perfect lens for YouTube videos, for filming yourself, you know, whether you're vlogging or, you know, have your video on a tripod like I have right now. This lens is perfect for that. You know, it's not really gonna be the best for portraits. It's not gonna be the best for, you know, longer focal lengths, you know, filming sports or wildlife or stuff like that. Cause this is a super wide angle lens. I think overall, this is the best lens for recording yourself or taking pictures of yourself. So the Sigma 16 millimeter is a fantastic lens for recording YouTube videos, for vlogging, or really doing anything like what I'm doing right now. So I'm actually recording with the A6000, the Sigma 16 millimeter 1.4. And I actually threw a mist filter on there because I really like the look of mist filters while recording a roll like this, like I talked about in my previous videos. But this is just a quick example of, you know, just like a YouTube type of setup, just talking to the camera, you know, basically filming yourself type of setup. If you're doing anything like this, I think this lens is perfect for that. It's really fast at f1.4, so it provides really good background separation like you can see right here, but still being a nice wide angle lens so you can get everything in the shot, you know, if you're doing a review, you want to show a product or something like that in the shot or if you have multiple people you're recording or if you're vlogging you know you can get everyone in the shot at once so really if you're doing any sort of recording yourself this is basically the perfect lens for that now when it comes to the price point of the sigma 16 millimeter lens this is about 400 dollars so still not a super budget option you know still pretty much the same price that the a6000 itself costs however the build quality is really good on this autofocus is amazing it does have a nice weather sealing gasket on it so it's going to be partially weather sealed However, of course, the A6000 isn't. Either way, let's move on to lens number four. 
So this lens right here is a big difference compared to the lenses I've talked about in this video. However, if you've watched my channel for a long time, you know that this is pretty much one of my favorite lenses of all time. So this is the Canon FD 50 millimeter F 1.4. Now, if what I said didn't just ring a bell, um, this is basically one of Canon's first versions of the Nifty 50. It's a vintage lens, so no autofocus, no automatic aperture, anything like that. It's a fully manual lens. It's gonna be more difficult to use than other lenses because of that. However, the look this lens produces is amazing. It's not super sharp, it's not super crisp. It has a lot of chromatic aberration, it has a lot of issues, but that's really the amazing part about vintage lenses. That's why I personally love them so much. And so many other people love vintage lenses and a lot of people strictly use these. I think it's just an amazing lens to kind of test out you know, if you're looking for a different type of photos one day, you can throw this lens on and just get some vintage looking, like amazing looking photos with this. I don't really know how to explain it. I've actually made a bunch of videos about vintage lenses in the past if you wanna check those out. But there's just something about using a vintage lens from like the 70s and 80s on a digital camera that just kind of gets rid of that sharpness, it gets rid of that digital edge and just makes your photos and videos look super organic. Now, in order to use this lens, you're gonna also need an adapter. So the one I use is the Photosy or Photosy FD to Sony Emon adapter. I'm gonna link that adapter down in the description, but I can't really link this lens in the description because of course you can't buy this new anymore. You're gonna have to check on maybe eBay or check Facebook Marketplace or you know even like thrift stores might have it, but you can't buy this new anymore. So it's gonna take a little bit more searching. However, it is probably the cheapest lens on this list. You can a lot of times find this for around hundred dollars. You know sometimes a little more, sometimes maybe even less. But at the hundred dollar price point, plus you know maybe ten or twenty dollars for the adapter. This is an awesome lens to play around with for portraits. You know, it kind of has that telephoto focal length on the a6000. And I pretty much use this on every camera I've ever owned. I love adapting it to different cameras and just testing out. But like I said, this lens isn't for everyone. It's a little bit more difficult to use. It's kind of a specialized look to it. So definitely do your research before you go into this. Don't buy this if you want to use it for everything you do, because it really isn't the best for a lot of things. All right, and then on to lens number five, the final lens on this list. So this lens is the Sony 55 to 210 millimeter f4.5 to 6.3 OSS lens. So again, this is another native Sony E-mount lens. You don't need any adapters. It just attaches and works perfect right with the A6000. As you can see, it's kind of a big lens, especially when you zoom in, it sticks out quite a bit more. However, it is super light. It's like insanely light. So it really doesn't feel very front heavy on the A6000, even being how long it is. So this is an awesome portable lens for walking around and getting those telephoto shots. So like I said, being 55 to 210 millimeters, this is the most telephoto lens on this list. This will be great for wildlife photos, nature photos, sports photos, anything like that. It is f4.5 to 6.3, so it doesn't have a constant aperture. The more you zoom in, the darker it's gonna get, and the slower shutter speed you're gonna need, or the higher ISO. So this is a perfect lens if you're in broad daylight. You know, it's really not gonna matter. However, once you get into darker environments, this lens is really gonna show its weaknesses. You're gonna need to bump your ISO up a bunch, which will increase noise in your images, or slow your shutter speed, which will add more motion blur to your images, but it also does have optical steady shot or image stabilization built into it. So you're gonna be able to get smooth videos. And in photos, you're gonna be able to lower your shutter speed a little more and still get a sharp photo. Now, another great thing about this lens is it's also pretty cheap. So you can get this next day shipped to you, Amazon Primed, for about $300. It's not gonna be super sharp, you know, not like the Sigma 18 to 35 type of sharpness, uh, because again, this is kind of a cheaper, lower level, Sony option. It's made kind of out of this plastic material. It's super light. It's not the highest build quality, which of course you can understand with the $300 retail price tag. But if you have a lower budget, you want to get into wildlife photos, sports photos, you know, any sort of really long focal length requirements, this lens is awesome for that. And so there you go. That wraps up my list of my five favorite lenses for my Sony a6000. Like I said, for any Sony a6000 series, any X series, FS5, FS7, any crop sensor Sony camera, all these lenses are fantastic for. Definitely leave a comment if you decided to pick up one of these lenses and let me know what you think of it when you do get it, if you're taking some awesome photos with it. And also stay tuned for more videos like this in the future. I have lots of videos about the Sony a6000 and about a bunch of other budget cameras, budget lenses, budget camera gear, anything like that. That's pretty much what I base my channel around. So if you're interested in that, don't hesitate to go down to the like button and subscribe to my channel. And that wraps this video up. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.